Good evening and welcome to the end of another week. I cannot believe it. The time is going so fast. It's been the weather this week has been just awful, hasn't it? We've had so much rain. It's been bonkers. But uh, well, there we are. It is what it is. I guess autumn is very quickly approaching, which means which is good because, uh, well, we're going to Florida in October. And we're looking forward to that. But more importantly, well, Christmas is just around the corner, isn't it? Should I should I not be talking about that right now? I guess probably not. We, we won't mention it. I won't mention the C word for the rest of the episode. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thank you for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home in the southwest of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our Nightsome Podcast. Listen, welcome along. Welcome to another episode. It's got loads of social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could give us a little follow, a little thumbs up. Oh, well, that would be just brilliant. We've also got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Time now for Friday Night Comedy with Dad's Army. This is episode one of series three. It's called A Man of Action. Present Arthelow, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> a Man of Action, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests Bill Pertwee, Julian Orchard, Jonathan Cecil, Larry Martin and Fraser Carr. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The Admiralty has just announced that so far British forces have been responsible for sinking or damaging enemy ships totalling almost six and a quarter million tons. Whilst the Home Guard obviously had no part in these operations, they are still doing their bit. Down at Warmington-on-Sea, for example, Private Pike and Corporal Jones are coming to the end of a routine evening patrol. Are you going to be much longer eating that piece of cake, Mr Jones? (laughs) Because I think we ought to report back to the church hall. I'm nearly finished now, Pikey. It's too good to rush. Yeah. It looks lovely. <laughs> oh, it is. Makes very good cake, is my friend Mrs. Fox. <laughs> Look at all those lovely cherries and sultanas. Hey, how can Mrs. Fox make a cake like that with everything on ration? Well, you see, Pikey, she pulls a few strings twice a year. Once when she celebrates her wedding anniversary and again when it's her old man's birthday. I thought she was a widow. She is. (laughs) Her husband died in 1934. I'm getting very hungry myself, Mr Jones. You're always a hungry boy. You know, I was thinking, I wonder if we'll ever get any bananas again. Of course we will when the war's over. I used to love a big plate of bananas and cream all mashed up with plenty of sugar. I'd take a big mouthful and press it with my tongue through the gaps in my teeth. (laughs) Did you used to do that, Mr Jones? Not a lot, no. (laughs) I couldn't risk it. Not with this top set of mine. I used to do the chocolate creams as well. Yeah, talking about chocolate, when I was out in South Africa during the Boer War, Queen Victoria sent each one of us lads a tin box with a slab of chocolate in it. Oh, that was nice of her. Anyway, I never touched that chocolate. I kept that tin unopened all through the Boer War, all through the 1418 War, and I never let it out of my sight until I had to go to hospital. And then I gave it to an old friend of mine, Charlie Higgins, to look after. Did you ever eat the chocolate, Mr Jones? Well, I never opened that tin for 35 years. And then one day I said to myself, I think I fancy a bit of chocolate. (laughs) Hadn't you had any chocolate during all those years? No, I don't believe in overindulging myself. (laughs) Anyway, I opened the tin, it was full of sand. That Charlie Higgins had eaten that chocolate while I was in hospital. Yeah. It's funny how you remember these things, isn't it, Mr Jones? Yeah. I remember when I was a kid. I was out shopping with my mum once, and I asked her to buy me a bar of chocolate, and she said no. On the way home, we were walking along by the park railings here. Just about this spot it would be, by these gates. 
and I thought I'd give her a scare. So I stuck my head through the bars. <laughs> and I pretended I couldn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> what did your mum do? Oh, she got in a terrible state. She was going to send for the fire brigade. And then I pulled my head out and I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't half give me one. <laughs> Well, of course, some kids are always doing silly things like that. Yeah, it was ever so funny, though. I thought to myself, right, I'll teach her to say no when I ask for chocolate. And then I bent down like this. Go on, watch me, Mr Jones, watch. Yeah. And I stuck my head through the railings. <laughs> like this, see? <laughs> I can see how funny you must have looked. Anyway, come on, Pikey. Better get back to church hall. Yeah, OK, come in. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones. What's the matter? I can't get my head out. <laughs> now, look, you're wasting your time, Pikey. I haven't got any chocolate to give you. <laughs> come on, come on, stop mucking about. I'm not mucking about, Mr. Jones. I tell you, I'm stuck. Hold on a minute. Blimey. I'll have to give you a pull. Hey, ow! Oh, hang on, you're hurting. Do you know, Pikey, I don't think your head's going to come out of there. I can't understand it. It came out all right last time. Well, how old were you then? Eight. <laughs> Eight? Well, your head's grown since then, hasn't it? Well, what am I going to do, Mr Jones? Don't panic, don't panic. No. <laughs> no, I'll find the telephone box and ring Mr Manring. Now you stay there and don't move. What? <laughs> and don't panic. Come in. Excuse me, Captain Mannering. Mr. Norris is here to see you. Mr. Norris? Uh -huh. He says he's a reporter from the Eastbourne Gazette. But didn't you, you arrange for him to come and interview you? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd nearly forgotten. Ask him to wait a moment, will you? He says he's going to follow you around for a week and then write an article about you and the way you lead the platoon. Huh? Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's so, Fraser. Uh -huh. Well, Captain Monnering, I may have said some harsh things in the past, but I want to say here and now that I think you're a very brave man, Captain, to let that reporter watch your every move. You're either very brave or else you're... Or I'm what? <laughs> nothing, sir, nothing. I'll ask him to wait. You know, Wilson, mm -hmm. I never really understand half of what Fraser says. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is rather difficult at times, mind you. I think I know what he's getting at. And I must admit, I, I'm rather surprised that you agreed to be interviewed like this. I don't see why. Anyway, one can't afford to offend the press. So when the editor of the Eastbourne Gazette rang and said they wanted to do an article on the platoon, and particularly myself, I jumped... <clears throat> I thought it best to, uh, to go along with the idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems to me to be asking for trouble. I'm not quite sure I follow you. Well, you see, sir, if the reporter's going to be around uh, for as long as a week, I mean, how are you going to... Uh, Cover up your mistakes. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that remark. <laughs> Look, you, you better hide these cups somewhere. All right, sir, all right. After all, we don't want the press to think we do nothing but drink tea. No, of course, sir, no. Anyway, it isn't true. I mean, sometimes we have coffee. Yeah, but don't be ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, get him in, will you? All right, sir, all right. Uh, Mr... Where are you? Ah, Mr. 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 Norris? Yes. Good. Uh, Captain Mannering will see you now. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Norris, uh, from the uh, from the Eastbourne Gazette. Ah. Evening, Mr. Norris. Evening, Captain Mannering. So you've got a notebook all ready to go, eh? Hey? Yes, 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 that's right. I'm going to call the article Captain Mannering, A Man of Action. Oh, yes. <laughs> Excellent title. Eh, hey, Wilson? Oh, yes, awfully good, sir. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Mr. Norris, I don't think you've, you've met, have you? Mr. Sam Wilson. Oh, pleased to meet you. How do you do? Now, uh, how about starting with a photograph? Yes, all right. Yes, sir. Do you want me standing or sitting? Not you, not you, Norris. <laughs> now, Mr. Norris, how about uh, one of me sitting at the desk working? Yes, yes, that'll be very good. Mm. Uh, how would it be if I was signing an important document? Splendid. What do you think, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, very good idea. But where do you suggest we get an important document? <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. We can't very well take any of those top-secret papers out of the safe just for the sake of a photograph, can we? You, you, you do understand, Mr. Norris. Oh, yes, 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 of course, Captain Mary. Yeah. Mm. I, I'll use one of these choir enrolment forms. That'll look all right. I, I don't think I ought to be seen using this ordinary pen. Wilson, let, lend me your gold fountain pen. You know, sir, I don't allow anyone to use my pen, you see. 
It spoils the nib. Yeah, I'm not going to use it. I'm just, I just want to hold it. All right. Oh, very well. Very well. Thank there you, you are. Thank you. Now keep the top on. Oh, don't be absurd. <laughs> How can I have my photograph taken writing with a pen with the top on? <laughs> now, how's that, Mr. Norris? Yes, that's very good. Stand by, then. Yeah, just a minute. Just, just a minute. I think perhaps I ought to be on the phone as well. Hmm? Might look rather Churchillian. <laughs> that's a splendid idea. Good, good, good. So... I shall be seen sitting at my desk, wearing my peak cap, signing an important document, and talking on the telephone. What do you think, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir. It's awfully good. Mm. Mind you, I'm a bit worried about your left foot. <laughs> what? What's wrong with it? Well, it's not going to be doing anything. Is it? <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. I'm ready now, Captain Mannering, if you could um, adopt the pose. Yes, yes, of course. There, how's that? Hello, hello. Mr. Manrin, that's funny. You answered the phone before it had rung. Jones, is that you? Yes, sir, this is me. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> Look, Jones, get off this phone at once. I'm having my photograph taken with it. <laughs> I didn't know you could take photographs with a telephone. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Is there something wrong, Captain Mannering? Wrong? No, 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 certainly not. Just one of my patrol phoning in. <clears throat> one moment, Jones. Yes, sir. During your week with us, Mr. Norris, you will discover that the whole operation works like a smooth, well-oiled machine. I'm sure I'm going to be most impressed. Yes. You'll excuse me, this, this won't take a yeah, moment. Of course. Yeah, Corporal Jones. Yes, sir. You better let me have your report. Yes, sir. Private Pike has got his head stuck in the park gate, sir. <laughs> <laughs> got his... Ah, yes. Yes, I see, Jones. Won't be a moment, Mr. Norris. Didn't you hear what I said, sir? Young Pike has got his head stuck in the park gates. Good, good, excellent. What's good about it? <laughs> I don't understand. Is it possible to uh, to remove the uh, the obstacle? I've tried pulling him out, but it's his ears, you see, sir. They're in the way. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I see. Yeah. Well, well, I'll be over as soon as I can. Right, sir, right. Goodbye, sir. Are you sure there's nothing wrong, Captain Manning? No, 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 no. Just a routine matter. <laughs> One of my patrols got caught up in... The, he, uh, that is, he's uh, been unavoidably detained. Pressure. Hmm. Of work, you understand. Up to his ears. <laughs> I was just trying to cover it up. I mean, cover, cover, cover his traces. Uh, yes, I see. I see. Could I ask what traces are you trying to cover up, sir? Yeah, Wilson. What? You should know better than, than ask me for specific details in front of a civilian. Just get the men together. We'd better go down and investigate. Oh, very well, sir. Very well. I think I'll come with you. Ah, uh, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Norris. I'm afraid you can't do that. Why not? Well, the thing which is exposed, uh, which we've got to, uh, to, to, to cover up, is, is, is highly secret. Ah, yes, I see. It's a case of um, walls have ears, eh? Well, ears certainly do come into it. <laughs> hey, I'll wait here, then. Yes, all right. Well, the men are ready to leave, sir. Jolly good. You'd better get a move on. <clears throat> Jones will be wondering where we've got to. Hey, I see, sir. He's pushed his head right through the railings. Oh. Yes. Really, Pike. <laughs> what a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manry. I don't understand, sir. Why didn't you tell us in the office that Frank got his head stuck in the railings? Because I didn't want that reporter to know. If he'd put this in the newspaper article, I'd have looked a complete fool. I see, yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Now there's an air raid. I suppose that means we ought to go undercover. Just put your steel helmets on for the moment. Right, just oh, put your oh, steel helmets on. Yeah, put them on. Now, the question is, how are we going to get Pike out of there? I could run back and work shop and get a hack saw, sir. Oh, it's like ours to saw through those bars. Well, why don't we send for the fire brigade? Yes, sir. That's, they're very good at that sort of thing. Uh, we lost a cat once, and my sister Sissy <laughs> called in the fire brigade, and they came and got her down from a big tree. Did they get the cat down as well? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no question of calling the fire brigade. But I don't want anyone to know about this. Uh, excuse me, sir. I have a jar of petroleum jelly here in my first aid bag. Uh, would that help? That's a very good idea, Godfrey. We could smear it round Pike's head and then we might find he'd slip through. Mr. Speaker, sir, yeah. I'd like to volunteer to smear the petroleum jelly round Pike's head, sir. <laughs> find out if he slipped through. Yes, all right, very well, Terence. You and Sergeant Wilson can do it together. Thank you very much, sir. There you are, Sergeant Wilson. As you are senior to me, you can have first dip. All right. <laughs> I see. I suppose around the years is the most obvious place. Yes, yes, Oh, oh, that's cold. That is. What is, is it? All right, all right. It's only some grease, Frank. Oh, Wilson. Hmm? 
Don't just dab at it like some Nancy boy. Smear it on. I am smearing it on. And so am I. Smear, smear, I'm going. Smear, I don't smear. want my egg greased. I shall tell my Uncle Arthur. Oh, do be quiet, Frank. I oh. deliver such a soft jessie, man. Yeah. We've used up the old jar now, Captain Mannering. Right. Walker, grab hold of Pike's legs and bring a full weight to bear. Oh, no. All right, Captain Mannering. The rest of you get what purchase you can. <laughs> One, two, three. He! Oh! Once and for all, Pike, will you stop raising these petty objections? <laughs> now, come along, men. Try again. Right, right. <laughs> Blimey. What was that? It's too heavy for a bomb. I think it was a line mine, sir. Thank goodness I thought it was Pike's head exploding. <laughs> What are you going to do about Frank, sir? I don't think this grease idea is working. No, neither do I. You nearly put my head off just now. Will you be quiet, Pike? This is nothing whatever to do with you. <laughs> Gather round, man. I want to discuss the situation. Right, yes, try sir. one. Right, right, sir. Now, look. We've got to get Pike's head out of those railings. Yes, yes. yes. Any suggestions? Yes, permission to speak, sir. I look at it this way. Drastic times call for drastic measures. Now, the only thing that's stopping us getting Pike's head out... But those railings is his ears. <laughs> what about it, Jonesy? Eh? Well, why don't we cut them off? <laughs> For goodness sake, Jones. Well, we needn't cut both off at first. We could just cut one off and try it. <laughs> don't talk rubbish, Jones. Pike can't walk around for the rest of his life without any ears. Well, that's better than walking around without any head. <laughs> wait a minute, sir, wait a minute. I, I, I think I've got it. Right, cough it up, then we'll see. Oh, well, look, now, now, Frank has got his head caught in the bars on the park gates. Yeah, we are aware of that, Frank. Yes. Well, why don't we lift the gate off its hinges, then we can take it and Frank back to the church hall. Hmm? <laughs> well done, Wilson. Just waiting to see who'll be the first to spot that. <laughs> Right, come on, Ben. Let's get the gate off. All right, all right. Here's the right. right. Now, are we all ready to lift? Yeah, yeah. Right. Up! Oh. Up. Pike, get off your knees, you stupid boy. We can't lift you as well. You should have said. Right. Up again. Oh. I think it's coming, sir. Oh, we're clear at the top. Oh. Well done. Now, now, let's get back to the church hall as quickly as possible. And let's hope nobody sees us. Right, Platoon, with the gate, by the left, quick march! Right wheel! <laughs> Keep in step, Pike! Step, right, step, right, step! Left, right, left! Don't juggle a private! No, don't juggle! No, my neck's all sore! Platoon! Oh. Lower the gate gently. Oh, blimey, that's better. Oh. That gate weighs a ton. I nearly pulled my arms right out of the sockets. What do you think he's done to my head? Oh, look, look. <laughs> uh, do stop grumbling. Yes, yeah, stop grumbling, Pike. Wilson, hmm? don't see any sign of that reporter fellow, do you? No, sir, you probably got fed up waiting. Just as well with Pike like this. Excuse me, Captain Manning. We can't he stand here all night holding this gate. Mr. Speaker, sir, why don't we get two long ropes and hang the gate from that beam up there, then we won't have to hold it? It's a very good idea, John. Walker, go and get two ropes. Right, Captain Mannering. Them yeah. whirling dervishes used to do this to their prisoners in the Sudan, you know. Hang them up in the sun, they did, with nothing to drink. I don't want to be hung up with nothing to drink. You'll do as a toll, boy. <laughs> Captain Mannering, I don't mind bringing Frank a glass of water from time to time. Ah, Captain Mannering, I thought I heard your voice. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Norris. <laughs> we hoped that you, we, we, we thought that you deserted us. <laughs> Look, Wilson, what a surprise. <laughs> Mr. Norris. Yes, isn't that mm. nice? It's a good job you've got back, Captain Nairing, because the warden said... Just a minute. What's that iron gate doing in here? And who's that chap with his head stuck between the bars? <laughs> ah, well, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. It's highly secret. I really must protest. Look, Mr. Upton, everyone talks... Just a minute, what's going on in my office? Ah, now, that's what I was going to tell you. The chief warden is holding an emergency meeting. How dare you. I'll soon put a stop to that. Come on, Wilson. Yes, all right, sir. Look, look, the thing is, what are we going to do about it? Now, look here, Hodges. 
Oh, there you are, Napoleon. Where have you been? Don't you know there's an emergency on? What are you doing using my office without my permission? Look, mate, we share this office, and at this moment I happen to be holding an emergency meeting. Emergency? What emergency? Do you mean to say you haven't heard? Oh, by the way, this is Inspector Baker from the police. Yeah, how do you do? And I expect you know Mr. Upton, the town clerk. Yes, of course. Good evening, Gerald. Good evening, Arthur. Nice to see you again. Look, you know, Wilson, that, that, that Rotary Club dance the other night was really great fun. Oh, yes, enormous. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you know, Connie wears awfully well, doesn't she? What do you think? No, no, she really no, does. No, I mean, never never mind about right? Connie. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come here, Hodges. What's all this about con- about, about an emergency? <laughs> a landmine has dropped on the railway line just outside the town. Yes, it's destroyed a hundred yards of railway track. It's cut off the town's gas and water supplies. Ah, oh, hmm. now that is serious. Very serious. I think I'd better phone GHQ. You can't. The telephone lines are down as well. Oh, no gas, no water, no telephone. The town's cut off from the ruins. Well, what are we going to do? All right, all right, Mr. Upton. No need to panic. But I'm not panicking. But somebody's got to do something, and quick. Now, look here, Hodges, what were you suggesting just now? Well, I, I was talking about trance. Wilson, I mean, I come outside a moment. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Something's got to be done. Certainly has, sir. There's only one thing for it. I shall have to take charge. Yes, sir. I quite agree. Just the sort of remark I'd expect you to make. What did you say? <laughs> well, I said I quite agree. I mean, if, if you don't take charge, God knows what's going to happen to this town. I'm right behind you, sir. Good Lord. Thank you, Wilson. Oh, no, don't mention it, sir. Get Jones, Fraser, Walker and Godfrey over here at the double. All right, sir. Right, Corporal Jones, Fraser, Walker, right. Godfrey, Come over on. here at the double. Yeah, How's that, sir? I hardly believe it, Wilson. <laughs> is this really you? Oh, yes, it is me, all right, sir. You, you see, when the occasion demands, I can bawl and shout, just like you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll open the office door. Right. I'm going to take charge as from now. All right, sir. Right. <clears throat> Now, look, Mr. Wright, attention. 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 attention, pay attention, pay attention, please, everybody, just listen, please, attention. Captain Mannering has an important announcement to make. Now, go ahead, sir. Everybody's listening. Yes, sir, we've all got our breath baited. <laughs> <laughs> now, then, gentlemen, this town is under martial law. What? What? What's that mean? Martial law is law enforced by military authorities in times of danger or emergency. I am taking charge of the town. Taking charge? We'd better humour him, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that he's gone mad. <laughs> he's been leading up to this for years, and he's finally done it. <laughs> well, listen, Napoleon, you're not getting away with it. Inspector, arrest that man. Uh, uh, just a minute, Mr. Hodges. Let's not be too hasty. Um, uh, Captain Mannering, I'm, I'm not sure you can do this. I mean, uh, where's your authority? This revolver's my authority. <laughs> And I've got 15 fully armed men behind me. I must get that down. Can anyone leave me a pencil? Yes, here you are. Um, <laughs> take it out, take it out. Oh, by Jove, Captain Mannering, you really are a man of action. And I'm right behind you. Huh? The power of the press, you know. The power of the press. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Right, all of you, follow me into the main hall. And Wilson, bring some paper and pencils. All right, sir. Martial law, eh? Here, listen, Mr. Upton, yes. and you, Inspector. Yes. Now, we'd better get into the hall, otherwise we shan't know what Napoleon's up to. Well, anyway, someone's got to stop him. We can't have him taking over the town. The man's a tyrant. Yeah. I mean, just look at those metal bars hanging from the ceiling and that poor fellow locked between them. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to punish his men. Oh. Well, I'm not being punished, you see. I just got my head... Be quiet, be quiet, Pike. <laughs> right, Wilson, Jones, Fraser, right, huh? and Walker. I'm going to give you all separate orders. Take them down, then get on your bicycles and shout them all round the town. <laughs> These are your orders, Wilson. Start writing. All right, sir. Ready? This town is now under martial law. All looters will be shot on sight. All <laughs> looters will be shot on sight. As town clerk, I demand that somebody stops him. He's behaving like some dictator in the South American Banana Republic. <laughs> oh, does that mean we're going to get bananas again, Mr. Man? <laughs> no. Stupid boy. <laughs> now, the gas and water supplies. Right, Jones, you're next. Sure. You will deal with the town's water supply. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Right. No water to be drunk unless boiled. No water to be drunk unless boiled. Well, how are they going to boil it without gassing? That's their business. <laughs> That's their business. No, 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 don't try that. Excuse me, sir, I... I not I now, wonder... not, not now, Godfrey. No. <laughs> Fraser, you're next. Oh, blimey, talk about getting carried away. All rumour mongers will be imprisoned. All 
from among us will be imprisoned. All defeatists will be imprisoned. All defeatists will be imprisoned. Anyone not obeying orders of the military will be imprisoned. Anyone not obeying orders of the military will be imprisoned. <laughs> We've only got two cells at the station. I've never heard anything like it. I'm going to see the mayor about this. Inspector, right, come with me. Walker, Potter. Yes, sir. No alcoholic beverages to be sold without permission from me. Hold on. That is most undemocratic. <laughs> you will be in charge of the liquor permits, Fraser. I'm right behind you, Captain Martin. <laughs> now, Wilson, uh, when the four of you have shouted those messages around the town, come back here and await further orders. I'm going to set up my headquarters at the town hall. Why the town hall? Because whoever holds the town hall holds Warmington on sea. <laughs> right, the rest of you, follow me. We march on the town hall. Oh, how much longer are they going to be, Mr. Godfrey? I can't stand much more of having my head stuck in here. Well, you must be brave, Frank, and hold on a little while longer. Oh, somebody will have to do something soon. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! What's that? No uh, one to take a bath without a permit! I'm going to martial law! Oh, that sounds like them now. Yeah, about uh, time as well. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! No one to take a bath! It's all right, Jonesy, that... Jonesy, Jones, 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 it's all right. You can stop now, you see. We're back. Oh, so we are, yes. <laughs> um, I never realised money needed just a load voice. Yeah, I could hear you four streets away. I felt rather like a rag and bone man. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, have you thought of a way to get me out of here yet? No, Frank, don't keep moaning, please. I, I, I'm working on it, Frank. I am. I, I'm working on it. I knew it. The whole affair has become a complete farce. Well, here comes Captain Manning. You're back out here, sir, aren't you? I thought you were going to take over the town hall. It was closed. <laughs> Doesn't open till nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, jolly good picture, though. Captain Mannering knocking on the town hall door and the town clerk looking back at him through the letterbox and giving him the V-sign. <laughs> I'll deal with him first thing in the morning. Mr. Mannering? Oh, really? What is it now? Oh, what are you going to do about me? Just be quiet. You'll be attended to all in due course. That's what everybody keeps saying. But due course never comes. <laughs> it never comes. <laughs> Come, Manley. I feel it is my duty to point out to you that you're behaving in an undemocratic and unconstitutional manner by usurping the power of the land. I must say, I think Fraser's right, sir. I mean, all, all this threatening to shoot people. I mean, you really are going a bit too far, you know. You're behaving like a dictator. Of course, I'm not behaving like a dictator. Just asking people to do as they're told. That's quite right, Captain Manrin. At a time like this, you've every reason to use Lurp, the power of the land, and to carry out the coup de tart. <laughs> someone has to take charge in this emergency, and that tart is me. That, that's um, someone is me. <laughs> of course, as soon as I consider that the civil powers are able to take over, I shall relinquish all control. In the meantime, everyone will have to knuckle down. It's for their own good. Oh, hello, who's this then? Oh, uh, good evening. I'm Captain Swan. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Captain Mannering. Oh, uh, I've been sent across from GHQ to take over control and distribution of all essential services. Do you mean you're putting the town under martial law? <laughs> I suppose you might call it that. I've got a notice here about it, all the usual rubbish, illegal assembly, looting, that sort of thing. But you're too late. Captain Mannering's done all that. Yes, I put myself in complete control. Oh, well, in that case, all I've got to do is take over from you. Uh, where's your office? It's over there, sir, Luke. Uh, the green door. Uh, thank you. Yeah, just, 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 just a minute. Uh, don't mind if I borrow your desk, do you, Mannering? Yes, but I... Really, Wilson, this is monstrous. It's undemocratic. It's unconstitutional. It's against everything we're fighting for. Well, I wouldn't worry, sir. The answer's very simple. As you yourself said only a few moments ago. What do you mean? Well, all you've got to do is to knuckle down. It's for your own good. And anyway, your turn to take over is bound to come one day. It's only a matter of time. Yes, I suppose so. What are you writing down there, Norris? Oh, I thought I'd just change the title of my story a bit. Uh, like this. Captain Mannering, a man of... Delayed action. <laughs> and 
That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe's Captain Mannering, John LaMeshire as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Down Corporal Jones, John Lardy Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Larry Martin Private Walker, Julian Orchard, the Town Clerk, Jonathan Cecil, Mr. Norris, and Fraser Carr, Inspector Baker. The Man of Action was adapted for radio by Harold Snow and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias. Welcome back. I'm enjoying our latest episode of Dad's Army and we're back for more mystery. An adventure from insurance investigator Johnny Dollar going live at 5pm UK time tomorrow. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. But for now, thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Summer Radio Show. Love you. Bye. For just £5 a month, you can get early access to all of our podcast episodes, copies of our script, access to further information, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. £5 a month. That's cheaper than 15 minutes of parking at Bristol Airport. Yeah, I know, it's crazy, isn't it?